Yes, 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 yes. Welcome to another great show of AP and TV Media. We have a lot in store for you today. As a matter of fact, you thought the last one was off the chain. This one here is going to dupe you stupid because it's just crazy. Now, I'm, what I'm saying, I know it sounds kind of humorous, but in actuality, sometimes we humor into our pain. And reason being humor to our pain is because one of the things, you know, and I thank God for, you know, it is a person, an individual on, on our, I'll say this way, our first guest is going to be Patricia Lee, and our second guest is going to be uh, Tasha L. Malone. Now, our first guest is going to be coming up, Patricia Lee, uh, Trisha, Patricia Lee. Am I saying that right? Patricia Lee. Thank you. I thought I had tongue twisted that one. The book is going to be titled State of Michigan Sick Building Syndrome. Now, that is going to be, that's what I'm talking about. It's going to dupe you stupid. Because we're going to learn something today about uh, 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 the sick building syndrome, uh, the symptoms, what it causes, and things like that. And, and we're going to also learn together how can we come out of situations like that. Okay, so I want you to join me on this in this first segment. And then our second segment with uh, 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 Tasha L. Malone, her book is titled Slow Motion to God's Glory, which is testimonial. Okay. Now, I'm going I, to, I'm not too sure, you know what, watch this. I'm going to walk off the camera, I'm going to grab the book. You're like, Mr. Hill, Mr. Hill, where you going? I said, well, because here, this testimony on this book is Victoria Brown. Now, you know what's funny is, I'm going to ask her about this again, because I know I asked her about it. You know, this, this to me, felt like a, a real serious testimony of an individual and I there's a part of that sorry there's a part of that uh, uh, um, it touched me and, and we do have questions for her but it, it really touched me I think it's gonna it's gonna move you as well but also it's like today it's like more of a testimonial day and I'm considering this more like a autobiography novel but I don't want to step on nobody's toes or step on my own toes, throw my own self under the bus on this. But I think you'll be blessed and I believe you'll be blessed by uh, uh, this book as well called Slow Motion to God's Glory. There is a real meaning to that term as well as the meaning, here you go, thank you, as well as the meaning to, uh, uh, for Patricia Lee's uh, uh, book, uh, uh, The State of Michigan. Sick Building Syndrome. So I'll tell you what, let's get this party started. Without further ado, I'll see you back in a few moments.
segment here, Patricia Lee. Sorry, I don't know how I was. You know, and uh, uh, early this morning I was looking up some things uh, uh, about this and sick building syndrome. And I want to ask you something about this, which is a mind blower to me. Uh, um, the first thing I want to start off with is um, what is your career position? What was your career position before all this even happened? Before, you know, uh, because I'm going to ask you some other questions about, because uh, 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 you're still doing therapy, right? Yes. Okay, and the symptoms are like nine uh, different types of symptoms? No. Or I how had, many? I had um, over 30 different symptoms. 30 different symptoms? Yes. Okay, let, let's stop right there. Did you, did you hear that? 30 different uh, uh, symptoms. So, you know what? Uh, um, that is incredible. That is scary. And I, I was nervous. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? 30 different symptoms. Yes. Oh my God. You know, that's, it's, it's just, you can't even comprehend. Nobody can comprehend that. No, they, they think it's when you mention all these different symptoms to yes. these doctors, um, they think you're crazy. Or either they pinpoint one thing like they did with me, like, um, certain specialists would say, oh, you have asthma. And then another pulmonary doctor would say, no, you don't have asthma. You have acid reflux. And I'm like, okay, well, what about the other 30-something symptoms? Okay, and wait, 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 wait. We're going to get to that because we're going to get to the root from the very beginning and how these symptoms even came to end up you getting these type of the symptoms. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, now, remind you, she is doing therapy. We're, we're going to get to that. But the first thing we're going to find out, okay, because remember now, we are talking about the, uh, 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 now I plore you on this, to, uh, uh, it's the state of Michigan, and it could be any state in the world, but right here with us, this is about helping someone, okay? And, and all individuals like this, all right? It's, it's called State of, the book is titled State of Michigan Sick Building Syndrome, okay? Now, stay on the key, word, key phrase, Sick Building Syndrome, okay? Now, what, what was your position before this happened? What were you, you were employed? What I was employed for the state of Michigan mm -hmm. at the Center for Forensic Psychiatry, which is uh, the state hospital for the mentally and criminally insane. It's in Saline, Michigan. It's right across from the women's prison. My title, my actual title was Forensic Security Assistant. That was my title. What, what, is, what is that? It's basically the same thing as a correction officer, mm -hmm. but correction officers deal with prisoners and we deal with patients. Ah, I learned something new here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, uh, okay. Now, one of the things I, I want to go into is that from that point, there was a, dis there was a discovery that I want to throw this out because there were some data and there was some documentation there was documentation, and one of the things I'm going to bring out, matter of fact, I'm going to bring it out from right here. All right, uh, let me see here, because these are all documented. It was the, uh, and I'm, I'm going to remind you now that this book, okay, is a autobiographical documentational book. All right, this is actually happening. And now, you know what, let me stop for a moment. I want to go to something with you. Okay. Are you currently still doing therapy? Yes. How long have you been doing therapy now? Uh, it's different, different parts of therapy. Is is uh, yes, but mental therapy, mm -hmm. and then is the healing, the detoxing, which is going to go on for. It's been going on ever since 2016 to whenever. So it's been three years so far. So far, yes. And and, and uh, um, these symptoms has been progressing. Um. 
Some of the symptoms, yes. A lot of the symptoms, I don't have 30 some symptoms anymore. Yes, but I know there's one of them, there's also a, a, a one of the symptoms that causes a, a lapse of memory. Yes, and, and, cognitive and, dysfunction, yes. yes. Thank you, thank yes. you. And, and that there alone, you know, this is involving the brain. Yes. Okay, not also just by flesh-wise of the body, but also it involves the, the, a, a, a destruction. It can cause a self-destruction of the individual or forgetting something, and it also causes a molecular structure of the brain, or how you want to say it? Yes. Or, 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 uh, okay, so one of the things about that, uh, um, the, this state of discovery was cited by water damage and chemical uh, toxic, toxicity. Uh, um, one of the things about the discovery of water damage, could, could you share a little bit? Because you discovered it. I discovered it with, with as far as in conjunction with me, yes. 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 Uh, about the, okay, my, now. My, my symptoms, yes. Okay, now about the water damage, there was water damage. When the first start was about water damage, and there was, uh, 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 there was chemicals. Okay, but the thing about the chemicals is about the uh, uh, dilution. I do it better than that. Let's, let's do this. What I said from the root. Six, uh, 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 of sick building syndrome. What does that mean? Sick building syndrome means when there is a group of individuals that are in the same house, same workplace, have symptoms. It's not just one, two, or three people. It's a group of people that this is affecting. They might have the same symptoms. That's where sick building syndrome term comes from. And, and, and what causes sick building syndrome? Water damage buildings. Water damage buildings. Yes, the fungus and, and, and bacteria that grows in these water damage buildings that aren't remediated properly, you know, or in time, yes. So if it lingers and nobody take care of it, yes. like say water damages from the ceiling, yes. and you see those puddles Stain, and stain stuff. Seal and stain tiles. ceiling tiles. Yes. Okay, stain seal, st stained ceiling tiles. Yes. Uh, uh, um, so these things actually cause damage if they're not taken care of. Yes, um, as far as when you see a stained ceiling tile, mm -hmm. note that if it's not replaced and that is not repaired within 24 to 48 hours, it's already producing toxins in the air that you're breathing in. See, this is hitting exposure, you know, stuff that you can't touch and see, but it's out there. Hmm. Okay, and then, um, and about chemicals, when, is there a combination when the chemicals are, uh, uh, they're not diluted properly? It, um, I'm not sure, but you know, as, as far as with me, when I mention in my book, I mention about um, volatile organic compounds, VOCs. Those are like ordin ordinary stuff that people don't take, you know, people take for granted, you know, like the paint that you use. Mm -hmm. um, when you open up a can of paint and you get that smell, mm -hmm. or a new car, you get that smell, that's a VOC that you're, that's a vapor, that's a toxin that you're smelling. When you take a cap off a marker, that's a VOC. You know, um, laptops, things like that that have motors, lights, you know, these things all emit VOCs. For the normal person, um, even with like water damage buildings, for the normal person, Mm -hmm. or not just water damaged buildings, but mold in general. For the no normal person, it might not affect you, but people who are, have allergies or weakened immune system, those are the people that it affects. So generally, in, in a, in a, for it to happen in a building, it, it would have to be a, a, um, t from tile to other areas like the bathroom, you know, the, the molds around the... Any, anything that gets wet that is not repaired is, you know, like okay. um, any kind of porous compound or, or the 
the composition that the tiles and stuff are made of, oh, just or the wood, or, yes. or anything like that. Once it comes into contact with water, mm -hmm. water grows, feeds into these things and the chemical compound that it's made of, and that's what, that's what starts the process. Okay, because um, who, who handles that? It, the the uh, uh, um, health health department, human and go, go ahead. I'm that's gonna... that's a good question, because <laughs> uh, uh, by me contacting everybody in the state of Michigan, I still don't know who handles it because nobody has done anything. But you would that's think you would think the health department, you know. Um, first, you uh -huh. first the first step of the you know the chain of command. You contact your employer. You yes. know, um, you let them know what's going on. Then the the next step, um, health department, um, state institutions like MIOSHA, you know things in that nature, EPA. But um, it, I don't know. I was going to say because uh, uh, all, all that stems from the EPA. Yeah. And, and one of the things about the, uh, the documentation and the data report, it was, uh, um, it, for understand, accord, according to uh, 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 the records, the employer was the first, and then it went to the health department, and then it went all the way up to, uh, when it goes to, from health department, which should be state, then it goes to the governor, and then it went to, uh, uh, and I, I hate that term all the time, political arena, where it gets lost in transition. Yes. But during this whole time, that whole place, that building, is actually deteriorating. Yes. So there should have been a, can, even though it was a state building, can the city inspect it? You would think so. If it's, it's, if it's a health hazard, which it is, mm -hmm. and then these patients that are housed there, are court ordered yes. there. They have no say so. They're ordered there for treatment and, and, you know, to be evaluated by the courts. So you would think that their safety would matter. Mm -hmm. And, but nobody has, nobody has done anything. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to speak, I know I shouldn't be doing it, but people are know me by now with my testimony. Uh, 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 there was a time that I, w I was falsely in prison. <laughs> there were times I was in prison for, you know, I was a young kid, stupid, and, you know, uh, 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 with ministerial background from my family, and I still ended up in there. And I ended up in a cell. They put me in this cell. They left me there for, I think, 42, 48 to 72 hours in a cell by myself. Uh, uh, I couldn't sleep on the bed because the bed was so messed up. So they didn't change the mattress or nothing. Mm -hmm. And they made a hammock for me on the bars. And I was like, what a hammock is for? But when nighttime came or the evening came, there was roaches everywhere, everywhere. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is insane. Now, but this was in Ca California during that time. Uh, 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 I mean, it, it, was, it was really crazy. But I, you know, like I said, it was in my 20s. I thank God for, you know, <laughs> delivering me. Believe that from that, you know, the whole thing. <laughs> those experiences like that, when you see places that deteriorates that bad, that is a sick building syndrome uh, 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 situation, isn't it? Because when I look at, uh, okay, when there's water damages, and like you say, the tile, and I thought about the, with the tile, the texture, everything changes, the chemical exactly. imbalance. Uh, uh, when you go to the restrooms and, and there's this lavender shape of, of all types of decor of mold yes. everywhere, and that doesn't get touched. Chemical imbalance. And then, you, like you say, it's toxic. So everything goes to the air. Yes. So when it's floating, you're coughing and you're, you're you know what's funny? It's just like we need to get checked often when we leave a building because in this case, it has, has done great damage to you from the beginning and progressed to the point not only, you know, from a, an a emotional level because you had a career. Yes. And you, you've, worked, you've worked there doing that type of position for how long? 17 years. 17 years. Yes. So there's, to, to me, the logic 
to me, you know, the logic, and, and it is illogical. It's illogical to think a person would just automatically go insane and just start going crazy when you're close to retirement. <laughs> that you, 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 that's what I'm saying? Right. So you're close to retirement, now you, you know, unless something is seriously happening. But you also, not, it's not just care for yourself, but you care for everybody's well-being, exactly. no matter who they are, no matter, you know, race, creed, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. and, and being in that position, you can, you're almost like, sometimes people care less about somebody that's in prison, incarcerated. Instead, you care for the well-being of everyone. Right. Okay, so I implore you on that. Yes, I do implore you on that. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, yes. one thing about that is um, I knew even though I, was, had, I had symptoms, mm -hmm. I knew other coworkers were speaking that they had symptoms, and I knew if it's affecting us, it has to be affecting the patients that live here, you know, because they're being exposed to it too. And that was one of the questions. I guess, you know, somebody from the top, you know, they mentioned to the union and there was like, well, if, if the water damage or, or whatever is making people sick, why aren't mm -hmm. the patients complaining? Okay, for one, the patients are mentally ill. It's our job to look out for their best interests. Maybe they don't know how to voice their illness or voice what complaints or symptoms they have. Yes. So, you know, that's another thing. You know what? I'll I, I tell you what. We'll be right back after this. I'm done.
this is real world stuff. This is stuff that's happening right now, and, and this is an epidemic of things because now we have somebody in, in therapy, uh, uh, in different counts of therapy, and at first, now you know what's funny is, uh, you mentioned something about uh, the group of, uh, 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 of people, individuals. It, it, it becomes a, it's a class action complaint. I would say it that way, action. Uh, they want to take action. Uh, you step forward as being a spirit to say, hey, look, everybody is having, I mean, there's quite a bit of people are, are having problems. This is not just one person. I am not going insane at the eight, uh, um, in 17 years that I'm just going to throw my career away to start running around complaining. Right. I am letting you know that there's a problem here. Okay? <laughs> I got a nice good patient, but I'm just going to stay away from it. I'm make it but hey, I got a problem here. And then the problem became, the finger became pointing as the individual being the problem for speaking out. Exactly. Which is wrong. Okay? It's like, wow, just throw away the First Amendment. But the, you have, you know what's funny is, in the First Amendment, the only thing about freedom of speech, they says if it causes harm. Let me show you a reversal in the First Amendment. As, you know, uh, as, as a legal system myself also as well. Okay, this is funny. In law, when they say about the First Amendment, it's a freedom of speech. But it's not a freedom of speech. They talk about uh, libel and slander, things like that. Libel and slander comes in freedom that uh, uh, um, uh, uh, disavows at the freedom of speech. When it causes what? Harm. You can do all the freedom of speech you want until it causes harm. Then when it comes harm, it becomes liable and slander if that is the case. Or there's other, uh, look it up, and, and I mean, attorneys, they'll tell you left and right because actually there are stipulations to your freedom of speech. Now here's the reversal of it. If you have freedom of speech or something that is inducing harm, then if it's harm towards you from something that somebody is not listening to, then guess what happens? They have violated your freedom of speech to take action. Anytime you go to file, uh, go to a complaint, file a complaint to say, "Hey, this is a problem. There's something going on." That goes from class action complaint to class action what lawsuit mm -hmm. because it's not getting resolved. Now, your First Amendment sticks up with those rights, but from that side, they violated the First Amendment because now it's like people are being silenced when they're becoming sick. And then when you're doing therapy and you're getting treatment and you're losing everything you have, then you have all rights to speak out to say, hey, look. This is not something I'm drumming up. This is not mm -hmm. something that I'm losing my job for. This is not something I'm losing my money for because I'm the one who's now, I need help. But the thing is, is that my First Amendment rights are violated because no action, you get that, yes. was taken. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what it goes to is what happened to the point from where it, I'm helping you out here. It, what happened, and for everybody else, because you also have a Facebook page that has to deal with uh, mold. Uh, yes. uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, Pat's Mold Recovery Journey. A, a group for a group, right? Yeah, it's my it's my group. It's, yeah, it's, it's, group it's like a it's like my own blog. Uh, my therapist had recommended um, that I start what well, my doctor did. Mm. He recommended that you know I start a journal for my depression. And so I took it a step further, mm -hmm. and I started this mold recovery blog. And what I what it basically is, you know, it's just showing, you know, things that I have done that have yes. maybe helped me, <clears throat> the food I I eat, the path that I'm on. Yes. Um, and it's you know I put inspirational stuff, you know, encouraging, you know, because um, even though this is a long journey to recovery, mm -hmm. and now, you know, even with my liver disease, yes, I'm not giving up. So. Amen. You know, I, what I would like to do is, uh, 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 as we go into our next segment, what I would like to do, I would like for you to also come back to follow up on conditions. But one of the things before we, before we, we, we go uh, 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 back into our uh, uh, PSA, uh, our messages, those symptoms, 
Do you have a list of symptoms which you anything? I do. There? Yes, please share that with us. The hardest part is that you just can't, you can never go back in in places like that. You, you've got affected so bad. Oh, you know what? I didn't, I didn't bring the actual, the first sheet. You don't have that page. No, I, I have the, uh, 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 it, Oh, it, yes, I do. I have okay. it. Very good. I put it Very on good. a separate sheet. You want it? Oh, I'll, 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 I'll say it then. Uh, um, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this this now I don't have all this those is your, symptoms the symptoms now, that oh, but not all of but before let, let me share with share everybody the uh, um, the symptoms that she ha had 33 symptoms okay headaches eye irritation arthritis anxiety hoarseness personality changes stuffy runny nose body aches hair loss thirst chills dizziness cough fatigue Odor sensitivity, bizarre dreams, chest pains, sore throat, static electricity. Static electricity? Yes. It's real. Wow. Poor sleep. Phlegm? Phlegm? Phlegm. Phlegm. <laughs> uh, 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 nosebleeds. Acid reflux. Dry, itchy skin. Difficulty breathing. Cognitive dysfunction. Allergies. Palpitations. Changes even the way you eat, huh? Yes. Depression, edema, well, just alone, uh, uh, nobody will take an action as depression. Uh, uh, edema, edema. Mm -hmm. weight gain, uh, uh, heavy menorrhea. That must say menorrhea. That. Menorrhea. Well, you're the nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Tinnitus? Tinnitus. I'm a publisher, I'm going tinnitus? Tinnitus. Tinnitus. <laughs> ringing, ringing in the ears. Oh my gosh! How many symptoms now? Now, um, now I'm down to maybe five or six. Five my, or six left. My eye, my eye problem. The doctors are saying my blurry vision will probably be with me the rest of my life. Um, uh, the hair loss. My hair still. My hair um, started coming out in 2015, and it came out in patches. And it was actually at the root of my hair when it came out. Uh -huh. It was like burnt on wow. the end. I didn't know what was going on. But come to find out, I, see, I had such a high level of toxins in me, mm -hmm. that's what was causing it. And still to this day, you know, my hair, it won't grow back in those spots, so. Wow, but I tell you what, you know what? Uh, 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 God has his hand on you. There's no doubt about that, you know. And yes. um, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's, that, that's, that's, to me, it can look like it's so contagious. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And yet, you know, uh, 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 and that's God how I felt. You through all, all the I way. felt contagious. But you're not, because I'm going to shake your hand <laughs> right now. All right, sister, I'm going to shake your hand right now. I want, to, I want you to come back for a follow-up because I want to follow up on the health as well as anybody. You know, again, if anybody, uh, 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 this is Patricia Lee. Her book is titled uh, State of Michigan Sick Building Syndrome. And if, if nobody connected, those of you out here, uh, readers and viewers, uh, 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 and newscasters uh, uh, um, as well, I threw that out there, is that, you know, to, uh, you can contact us or, uh, uh, um, or, or Patricia Lee or, or find a way or contact the stu our studio here. Contact APN TV Media or go to our website because the fact that, um, uh, or, or 734-230-7174 extension 105 uh, because the fact that nobody's doing anything and she is not the only, let me say it again, she is not the only one that was getting worse. If you notice, there was a numerous amount of people during that time for the three-year period that was going, you know, getting worse. Mm -hmm. She is, is one that is recovering because she had to step away from a career job for her own life. Isn't that something? 
I did. That's the Holy Spirit doing that to you. I had to throw that out there too. Yeah. But God bless you, sister. I'm glad to have you on, you on board here, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again. <laughs> and, really you. Thank you. and everybody, uh, um, in our next segment will be uh, 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 Tasha L. Malone with uh, Slow Motion to God's Glory. So we'll be right back after this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It wasn't as bad as I thought. <laughs> You know, I, I know you're doing a second book. You yes. know, you're doing a children's book. will be coming up pretty yes. soon. And now you have this book, Slow Motion to God's Glory. Yes. You know, it, it's, uh, uh, um, why I still want to do that, just to start off, is part of this book, I know, I just have to ask you again, <laughs> is somewhere part of this book has actual, it, it, it's supposed to be nonfiction. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's supposed to be fiction. But does it has non does it have some nonfiction aspects to it? Um, it does. It has a little bit of my personality and what I. That's what. Yes. Okay, it has your personality. Yes. Yes. Okay. It very has. good. Very good. Because <laughs> I know. I mean, when when we did do movies stuff like that, actually, you do fiction with nonfiction aspects, yes. even though it is still fiction. And here, I want to say, man, that just seems too too real. Mm. But it, it is a a a. a, a, a a testimony yes. and a, uh, 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 a from de derived from your not only just from your personality, but you, you put your heart and soul yes. into it. So you know, so I I felt blessed to uh, 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 to, to read it, Thank but you. it kept throwing me off. Cause I'm like, is this really her or not? Is it or did she blindsided me on this <laughs> one? But slow motion to God's glory. The title. How did you come up with that title? Now that is very interesting. Um, I'm a poet by heart. I am a poet. So okay. all I've ever written was poetry and, um, and songs. I will take a song that's already been written and just rewrite the lyrics to fit God's glory. So nice. this book, when I was sitting at a job, um, like I said, I'm a poet by heart, just writing poetry and it's just dropped, God dropped it in my spirit. And I thought it was just a short story. I said, okay, and I just started writing and writing. I said, this is a little different. This is, um, this seems like a book. And then he said, slow motion. I said, slow motion, because I was stunned too. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> he said, slow motion to God's glory. So what that mean is, 
We go through so much and life can take us on a journey. We are, you know, we're on a journey and life can take us through, you know, bumps and, and, and crossroads and ups and downs. And we can get off track, you know, where God wants us to go and what God is doing in our lives. And the world takes over, the luxury of the world, the pleasures of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we start to, that starts to consume our life and we're like forgetting about God's will. So he has to say, hey, remember, remember my will, remember me. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that was um, the slow motion is when God brings everything back to your remembrance because the Holy Spirit teaches you all things to bring all things back to your remembrance. Very good. So he will bring it back to your remembrance to let you uh, remember and, hey, you need to s just slow down. I know you're, 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 um, you're excited and you're going through and you're and some and we go through our trials and tribulations that's one of the things that was in the book mm -hmm. she started to go through her victoria which is the um the main character started to go through trials and tribulations because she disconnected herself from god god will never leave you nor forsake you some people say god has left my life no we disconnect ourselves by going a different direction so, and then once we get so overwhelmed of life and things going on in our, um, in our community or, or wherever it may be that's consuming us, and we tend to forget about where God wants to take us. So he just slowly brings it back. So once we say, okay, I need to humble myself, I need to pray, I need to repent, and um, and once we do that, and God just brings this back to our remembrance, his goodness, his glory, his peace, his love, his I've never left you, you know. So that's where that slow motion came from. I can relate to that. <laughs> I was thinking about the fast paces and all the luxury until... And I was thinking about when you said that, I'm like, ouch. Because <laughs> after that, that's when I, you know, whoo, yes. turn around and hit the skid row from all <laughs> the fun and running around. And, yes. and even did extras uh, 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 in, the, in the Hollywood, still up in California, doing the, uh, being this a clayon. I should have realized when I got hit with, with a rubber, <laughs> not rubber, a foam orange boulder. <laughs> that was into my, my whole life because I was just too out of it. Because afterwards, I went out and I just went partying. Mm. You know, the funny thing is I took my mom to watch me on the Star Trek thing, mm. you know, play as a clown. Oh, wow. But it, yeah, <laughs> but when the boulder hit me, I should have knew it hit me for a reason. <laughs> because life was going to hit me in the moment yeah, when I yeah. step out those doors. That's a whole other subject. Mm. And anyway, uh, uh, um, you, you know what's funny is, is that from that point, I was going to ask you about that. And, and that's good. It's, it's one of these uh, questionnaires. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your testimony. Oh, yeah. You got me over here testifying. <laughs> I think y'all got me testifying. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> the host is testifying. No, you're going to testify. Amen. Amen. All right, go ahead. So, what brought this book to publication, to uh -huh. manifestation, was the testimony. <laughs> what I've been through. Um, I was born with a heart defect, so wow. I've had, um, and my mom, which is here, thank God for her, and my son and my oh, grandson. Oh, yes, yes. Do, do me a favor. I'm sorry. Uh, talking about, <laughs> do a shout out to the family. Go ahead and do a shout out. Say yes. hello to, to, to. Hi, mom. My mom, Royce Gray, and my son, Marquise Gray, and my yes. grandson, Kamarian Lofton. Wow. Hello, awesome. hello. And my youngest son wanted to be here, Tayo Hughes, but he has he had to work. He had to work. Wow. That was good. Yeah. 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 And, uh, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. Okay. So my testimony, mm -hmm. uh, I was born with a heart defect, and I had so many surgeries and procedures. The first great um, surgery was the um, open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. I had open heart surgery um, in my early 20s, and after that, I've had pacemakers. So I've had four pacemakers, four pacemakers. I've been in four. and out. Four? Yes, yes, sir. 
Mm. Uh, scares me. Uh, um, who was it? Uh, uh, um, my son, uh, um, his wife uh, up in Florida, uh, uh, um, she had to have heart surgery and they cut her open and she got this big old scar yeah, and stuff. Yes, and, yes. And, and that was just one, I think one or her second one, uh, uh, because the second one they thought, you know, that was going to be it for her. But she's still around, mm -hmm. thank God. Amen. And, and uh, uh, she has a picture on Facebook to show it. I'm just going, mm. and you're talking four? Yes. I was, uh, I'm sorry. I would have said no more. Uh, yeah. Lord, it's time. <laughs> it's time. But you know what I'm saying? Because you know how they say we go to the hospital and keep going back. Yes, Once you start that, yes. it's just repetitious going back to the hospital. Yes. How did it, you end up going to four? Well, the pacemakers only last for seven to 10 years, the battery life. So they have to replace the pacemaker. I, um, Wait a minute, the pacemaker has a battery in it? Yes. Ooh. Yes, it has a battery in it. It only lasts for seven to 10 years. Mm -hmm. They have to take that um, portion of the pacemaker out. Your wires are still in your heart. And they Ooh. just put a new pacemaker in. It's, a, um, it's surgery. It is surgery. So four times, you know, they cutting in this same spot. <laughs> you do not need no stress. <laughs> yes. And I can contest to the, um, the large incision from heart sur open heart surgery. Um, so I've been through that. I've been through mm. so many different procedures. Um, my heart, and she was talking about the different um, signs and symptoms that she has had. Uh, Miss um, Patricia. Oh, Patricia yes. yes. Um, I told you this 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 segment today is, woo, y'all got me. Mm -hmm. um, oh man! I know, I know. <laughs> oh man, that's you know I don't, you know oh. God has His hand on you too. That's, yes, that's yes. crazy. Yes, that's crazy. You know, trying to comprehend that. Yes, you know they say the less fortunate, and then you look at it and you go like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. you run. You know, I like to run around and say I'm blessed. When you go through <laughs> something like that and you sit here to talk about it, the rest of us should be running around saying how blessed yes, we are, yes, how fortunate, yes. because a lot of people cannot survive off of something no. like that. Now, I would like for you to t give us a little bit about the book. Okay. Um, Slow Motion to God's Glory is about a young woman who has a firm Christian foundation. Um, the story, mm -hmm. um, she's a, a clothes designer. Her specialty is evening gowns and dresses. And she, um, you know, she went to college to pursue her career. Uh, she ministered to the young ladies um, in college. Um, she got an opportunity to go to uh, or to be employed with this um, designer company. Um, and she was blessed because she entered a contest um, who will design the, the best um, evening gown. So she entered a contest and she won that contest and her company receive recognition for that. So that boosts her up to one of the highest positions in her company. And she was getting flooded with different um, um, luxuries like uh, company car and houses and meeting all these celebrities and, and pampering. So she thought that um, she had enough church. Not that she was going away, that she um, stopped going, but she stopped participating. 
she was just going just a little bit here and there. She said, well, I have enough word in me. I have enough God in me. I don't need to keep going, you know, like I used to when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And so she, um, she let those luxuries consume her life, which steered her away from, her, from the Lord and the will that he has for her life. Um, and things started to spiral out of control. Her life started to spiral out of control. Mm. She, she had a, a college roommate that came in mm -hmm. and was plotting against her and trying to get her to fail. And um, she was in a lost love relationship and she had desires for another man. <laughs> so <laughs> this mm -hmm. book is really going to take you for a world, <laughs> well, <laughs> but inspire mm -hmm. you and impact you in the midst of so it. it's got a lot of twist in there. Yes, it does. Very good. Very and, good. Um, so to jump up to the, the next um, contest is a millionaire that's going to invest a million dollars in whatever company mm. that has the best designs. And um, since she was in charge of that, her boss didn't appreciate or did not like her designs because she wasn't creating the um, designs that she used to, you know, mm. because she will, she will pray and ask the Lord and, you know, help me, but she wasn't doing it. She was doing it on her own. And um, it was her own work, so it wasn't what her boss liked. Yeah. But um, it all turned out in her favor. She said, you know what, I need to give back to my first love. And she did. She repented. She. Um, but don't tell us the ending. Don't tell okay. us. Don't, don't, don't just call okay. <laughs> But yes. yes, you guys should see. I mean, read the ending. Read the ending. It's, you'll you'll find out. You'll yeah, find out. Yeah, there's some twist in there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Gown. Mm -hmm. See, I remember. I remember <laughs> and so uh, I'm not gonna say. That's why I said it's a spoiler. Yeah, 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 I don't want a spoiler. It's good. It's good. There's something in there. I, I like in that. That was kind of cool. You did a great job. Thank uh, you. Um, but we run out of time. <laughs> Uh, you know, Commission God's Glory. Uh, uh, I, I love the book, and, and I encourage readers, you know, to check it out and everything, you know, uh, uh, themselves, you know, here. Uh, uh, and uh, it's, got, it's got, you know, that little side of romance. It's got, you know, yes. I mean, it's got reality in it, which is cool. Reality at the same time, and, and, and lets you know that just reality and your spirituality. Yes. And, and where... Uh, Victoria Brown stands at mm -hmm. because it, this is a funny thing to it. And no, it, it's it's kind of funny that we had a client that was Victoria, her name was Victoria Brown, <laughs> but there's no connection. No. That was kind of cool. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm glad to have you on the show. Thank you. God Thank bless you. You, so you have a powerful testimony. <laughs> and, uh, and everybody, I want to see you come back too because you got another book coming out. Yes. And then after that book, I'm hopefully you do a poetry book as well. I have since a, you threw I that have, out. And a I testimonial have. book. All right. Yes, All right, yes, so yes. everybody, everybody, I'm, I'm telling you what, though, uh, um, and like I say, I want you to come back and everything, but I want you to have a blessed day today. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, uh, you got loved ones, hug your loved ones, your relatives, because this was a powerful testimonial day today, and, and, and uh, uh, um, I want you to be in, encouraged. All right? So I'll tell you what, God bless, and see you next week. Okay.